Hey guys, today we're going to do an introduction to watercolors. Um, so if you are, um, I like to, these are actually a lot of fun to work with. The Crayola watercolor trays. Um, this one comes with eight colors. And as you can see, you can have more than eight. So I'm going to talk about mixing just a little bit. But this right here is a mixing tray. And these right here are your colors. And the first thing you want to do is start taking the water. This is what I call waking them up. And you're going to drop... Sorry, I was playing around with the color. Um, you're gonna take the color and just kind of slot it in there and get each one of these wet. That's what I call wake them up because watercolors are not acrylics. You cannot drop your brush in the color and just start painting or else you get something that looks like this. And this is not pretty, okay? All right, so I'm gonna flip back to here. Um, so we're gonna talk about different things you can do with watercolors. And um, you can you can have the dry paper and have your color ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab another color. I'm gonna use purple this time. Let's see. And I like to kind of put it right here just to make sure like the pigment looks right or I have enough. So the paper is dry and then I have wet paint. So I'm gonna paint that. I'm just gonna paint some squares and fill them in. All right, and if you notice this one right here is dry. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that one in just a little bit because watercolor is all about patience <laughs> and I cannot stress that enough because you have to be willing to let it dry <laughs> that's why a lot of people use hair dryers um and in this case we're just going to let it dry you have to be willing to let it dry and then come back in and add more layers um you can do so many things if you add layers because you can show the realism and values and just make things work okay so this is wet paint on dry paper all right now i'm gonna wet my brush and i'm gonna make the paper wet and it's okay if the water is a little bit tinted just as long as it's a little bit not a whole lot so i'm gonna paint a square with water then i'm gonna come in i'm gonna grab me some paint i'm gonna fill it in this is wet paper wet paint So there's different ways that you can do this, okay? So this one, I'm gonna use this example to show you. Let's just say, oh, I got too much paint on there. It's too dark. I'm gonna dry my brush off, which by the way, make sure you have your paint, you have your water, you have your brushes, you have your paper towel. So the paper towel is mainly used to, I can dry my brush off and I can actually take my brush and kind of mop up that water if I want to. All right, so this is wet paint on wet paper. Now, the re one of the other reasons why, see all these little bubbles? You have to have patience with watercolor because if you keep playing with it, you'll eventually either A, make it muddy, or B, you'll actually start picking up the fragments of the paper with your brush. And so that means stop, let it dry. <laughs> and you might can do something with it, but if you keep playing with it, it's gonna not be pretty. Okay. All right. So I'm rinsing my brush. I'm going to dry it off. And see, I want to do a little bit of orange. That's too much red. So I'm going to rinse my brush. Dry it off. See, if you don't, then you, now I've got red in my yellow. Which, if that happens, we can clean that up. So I'm rinse my brush. And then I can take this. I'm, gonna, I'm wiping it on the paper towel, all that red that I just put on there. There we go. All right, so I'm going to leave this right here. All right, so one of the things I want to show you is, okay, so this is uh, dry, dry paper, wet paint. Dry paper, wet paint. Dry, wet paper, wet paint, okay? So there's different ways you can paint. All right, I'm gonna take some water. I'm gonna add some water to this color that I made. And I'm gonna show you the drag and pull method. All right, let's add a little bit more red to that. All right, so one of the things I wanna to talk to you about with watercolors is the more pigment you have, the darker the color, okay? So if you notice, I'm just gonna, I'm just adding more pigment to it just because, okay? So see how that looks like that? Well, there's other ways you can show values. You can, I'm drawing my brush, 
I'm rinsing it and I'm drying it because I don't want any more pigment. The more pigment you have, the darker the color. So now if I want to lighten the color, dry brush, and I'm going to drag it and pull it. Now see if you, I haven't rinsed my brush, so now this color is the same color. So I'm gonna rinse it, dry it, and then I'm gonna pull it down. Okay, that's the drag and pull method with a dry brush. All right, so let's go with, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's go with this red, it's pretty red. All right, so again, darker the pigment, the more pigment you have, the darker it is. So this time, I'm not going to dry my brush. I'm just going to rinse it. So I'm rinsing it. Notice what the water is doing. It's just it's like flooding it down. And a lot of people use this method. I'm going to come back up here because I want to take care of that lawn. Um, a lot of people use this method in doing this. I don't And then they like to make drips. Okay. So, anyways, all right, so there's those. All right. And then what I want to do is I'm going to show you. So these are dry a little bit. I just put my fingerprints on them. I'm going to take just a little bit of green. Uh, when we talk about layering, actually, yeah, so I'm going to use green. When we talk about layering, we want to start with light pigments. So these are pretty much, these are bland. So if you notice how light this is, and even if I were to take the turquoise with water, I'm paint some circles, and I'm gonna let that draw. If you notice, uh, what I was doing was I was actually adding to it, so you can show values in doing this as well. So if I were to start green, and then I made, I had a darker color already made, and this is my light sources this way, so my shadows are over here, I can paint those in. The only thing you need to make sure you do is kind of play with it, so that way you have that, okay? Um, but I would, I, I prefer if you let it dry and layer because that's really going to mess you up. You're still going to want to add a darker shadow right there as well. Alright, so this one, I'm going to make an apple. And then, so let's say I didn't want to do that and I put too much paint there. I can actually, while the paint is wet, take my napkin and kind of mop it up. Or I can take a, my brush and I can mop it up. Okay. And so what I want to do is I'm actually going to put my colors down while I'm waiting on them to dry. And what I want to show you is you don't necessarily have to paint everything. So I'm going to leave skips. Okay. So this is going to start with my apple. Okay, and then while I'm waiting on them to dry, I'm actually going to go ahead and just paint, let's see, let's go ahead and paint a couple more apples. You can draw them out with pencil. Um, I've just... I painted these so much that it's kind of, it's easy. I'll draw one out in pencil real quick. Um, especially because I do encourage you to make sure you have your design drawn in pencil. I'm gonna get rid of this line. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. Um, and then to draw an apple, it's basically a circle. Um, it's got like a little bit of a curve right here. And then it kind of just goes up. It also looks like a tomato. All right. So, we're going to come in here. I'm going to start with a light layer. I'm going to take some of this off. There we go. 
And if you notice, see right here where this is already drying, and we have these crazy spots that just didn't get painted. Um, that's normal in watercolor because that also helps that helps to show the emphasis of the layers that were created. Okay, so this one's still wet. This one is dry, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this little bit of green and add it right here. All right, again, remember, the more pigment you have, the darker it is. So the more water you use, the lighter it is. So I'm actually just going to use my wrist and kind of place this down. And then I'm going to put a little bit right here. All right, so I placed it. I'm going to dry my brush off. I'm actually going to take it. And I'm going to just kind of blend it a little bit because I really don't want those lines. All right. So sometimes lines are good because they help. Um, but sometimes they're not, especially with watercolors or even color pencils. You really want to make sure that you're showing the transitions from dark to light. We're showing values. Okay. All right. So on this one, I'm going to add just a little bit extra red. Grab some yellow. All right, so, and always my light source seems to be coming from this way, so my shadows are going to be over here. So there's something really cool of watercolor. So if you've watched my videos on coloring, we talk about staying in the family range. So if you're warm colors, cool colors, you stay in this range. Now, the cool part of watercolor is there are other colors. You stay in the family range until you're done. You can use other colors to show values. And I'll show you in just a second. So I'm actually going to leave those there. I'm going to add a little bit of a darker right here because I really want this to have like a texture style. All right. Let me, while I'm waiting on them to dry, let me take this out of my brush, out of my yellow. All right. I'm actually going to go ahead, throw some yellow, and I'm going to drop some yellow right there just to kind of make that pop all right so over here to this one this one's pretty much dry I'm gonna take a little bit more green I might take just a little bit of blue there we go that's a pretty color all right and then I'm going to So basically, the way I like to paint is I like to place it on there, wash my, rinse my brush out, dry it off, and then I like to take and then go right beside those lines and do the drag and pull method. So if you notice, you're already seeing where everything's light and dark. Um, so apples are all different. That's, I think that's why a lot of people like drawing apples. They come in different colors. They're almost the same shape. Um, but their shine can be a little bit different. So if you notice, like on some apples, they have uh, certain areas where there's blemishes and certain areas where there's no blemishes. I'm gonna show you something real quick that I just remembered. If you notice that you're painting and you're painting and you're painting, and you're like, oh, this isn't looking right. See these lines? That's because you ran out of water and you ran out of paint. <laughs> you just ran out of water. Uh, make sure your brush is constantly moist. All right, so we're going to wait on this one to dry. I'm going to move to this one. I kind of want that one to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to add some red. And then if you notice, if you're kind of doing this, you're like, oh, it feels a little dry. You just need to add a little bit more water to it. There we go. So again, I like to add the dark pigment. Remember, more pigment, less water, darker it is. More water, less pigment, pigment, the lighter it is. Okay. So just gonna kind of blend, get that worked in there a little bit. I 
um, when I was in college, I went to a community college, and she had us do an entire, and I still have it too, uh, we had to do a whole book on apples. And every apple we painted showed every technique that we were taught. So if you watch any YouTube videos or other YouTube videos about painting, uh, you'll see that you can take it while the paint is wet, put saran wrap on it, let it dry, pull it up, and then you have lines. Um, there's also where you can put salt, uh, sprinkle it on there, and the salt is, it's like science, it's so cool. The salt absorbs the paint where it's sitting, so then when you take, after the paint dries, you can take the salt off, if you do it right, you have all these like little flecks, um, and that's where the, the salt was, because it's all, the salt was absorbing, so it's pretty cool. All right, we're going to move back to this one, um, and I'm actually going to take a little bit of purple, and I'm going to mix just a tidbit of blue, and I'm going to take a little bit of this green, Ooh, that's a lot of blue, and I'm going to take and make my shadows just a little bit darker. And it's okay, I went out of the shape. Alright, so I like blue as a shadow. I love purples make a very good shadow. I'm actually going to take a tidbit of black. Oh, that's a lot of black. Black is a very dominant color. Um, red is a very dominant color. So if I wanted to make a shadow, I'm just going to use a, a very dark color that goes with it and make a shadow. I'm actually going to use my shadow to emphasize in there. There we go. All right, so this isn't necessarily an apple, it's more of a ball. All right. Let's see, yeah, this one's good. Okay, I'm going to take purple on this one. And I'm going to mix it with some red. And put some, ooh, that's gonna make it a little bit of brown. There we go. All right, so I made just like a darker red and put it right here on my shadows. Now again, I like to take the dark pigment that I make of each color and place it down. And I'm just gonna kind of emphasize. Oops, I wanna rinse my brush first. And I'm just going to take and kind of drop. Now, you do not want to use, and I think I just did it, you don't want to use your darks to cover everything. So I'm going to kind of fix this up. All right. And that may not have been the color choice that I needed for um, this apple. I may go back in and make some lights and put in it. I really like this blue, so I'm actually going to use this blue for my shadows on this apple. So again, I'm going to place them in. If you notice, I'm not placing it everywhere because I still want those other layers to shine through.
There's different ways to paint watercolors. Um, there's different ways that people people do paint watercolors. I'm gonna come back and put some more of these shadows up here. Really like how this one turned out. Um, this one's kind of giving me a hard time. Still really pretty. Um, okay, so what I was saying was there's different ways that people paint with watercolors, um, just like there's different ways that people do clay. So it's really up to you to play around with it and figure out how it is going to work. See, that's how you mop up if you want to mop up. I'm going to put it back. I was just like, oh, this would be a great opportunity to show you guys because it's huge contrast when you have all that dark. All right. So I'm going to come right here. So with this, it's a lot about layering, and I encourage you to layer, okay? You don't want just plain, um, you know, colors because if you see the difference between this one, this one, this one looks realistic, okay? Then you have these guys. I know what it is. It's because I put so much purple on it, it looks like a rotten apple. Um, <laughs> so it's, like I said, it's up to you. So let's, we did this one. So let's do this one just a little bit differently. Uh, I'm actually just going to go with some red on that. Let me add in some water. And then you may have to change, if your water starts getting gross, like, I'm going to change my water in just a minute. In a, I'm going to change my water in just a minute. Um, but if you notice your water starts looking gross, it's probably time to change it. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, I put too much purple on it. That's why it kept bothering me. So, yeah, we're going to call this one an eggplant-ish. All right, and then I'm going to take, so I'm going to mix that purple just a little bit. Whoa, I didn't want that. Just a little bit with that red. I'm gonna put too much. And then uh, purple is great though. I just put too much. I'm actually gonna take just a little bit because I want to put it in here in the shadow. They're definitely good for shadows. Like if you were to paint the beach. Whoa. Actually, that's the color I want. So if I said no, it's not. If I were to paint sand for the beach, there we go. And we're just gonna pretend that's the right color. We're also gonna pretend it's dry. Let's just stamp it. All right, I would take purple. We're going to do some footprints. And that's how I would do the beach. So purples, purples and blues are really good for shadows. Okay. So I hope this helped. Um, again, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. And if there's anything specific that you're wanting to see, let me know. Okay. So this is watercolor introduction. And then the next one you're going to see is where I'm actually working on painting. So we're actually going to do a couple of practices. So this one, you're drawing shapes and painting. The next one, we're going to draw and we're going to practice playing with it. Okay. So once you have finished, you can take a wet paper towel, wipe this out, rinse out your watercolors, clean your brush, get some fresh paper towels, and let's get started.